Alrighty, hello and welcome to this build guide for the Thoradin. Uh, this is a new experience for me. This is the first time I'm ever actually recording a video while live on stream. So it means it's all gonna be taken in one take, which means I'll probably make a lot of mistakes and sound silly sometimes. Um, I apologize, but uh, that's, I guess, how it has to happen if we're gonna do it live and if I'm gonna be able to do enough of these videos and still stream as much as I want to. This is the best way to do it. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay, so let's get into the build. This build has been a lot of fun. It was kind of an accident. I didn't really mean to come across it, a happy accident. Uh, we were doing a weekend tourney and I'm like, I wanna do, I just wanna do a hammer throw build because I haven't done it in a while. I'm like, let's do uh, a hammered in. I've never really done a hammered in, believe it or not. That's what we did. So if you like Diablo 2 and you liked the hammered in Diablo 2, you're probably gonna like this one. I really like this one. It's basically hammered in on steroids that were designed by Thor because it uses smite as a lightning skill to shock enemies and then stun them. And that really helps because it's got stun built into it and just like most of the enemies can't move and they all die and it's a great time. So yeah, uh, what I'm gonna do first is we're gonna do like a quick five waves here so you can see some gameplay. Since I'm not editing over much of anything, that's the only way to get the gameplay in here. So you can see kind of the power of the build. Then I'll go into the pros and cons and everything I normally go into. So let's just go ahead and start with that. Alrighty. We're already at 120 because I was changing some skills around a little bit to make them perfect. And we're there now. And so let's see what it looks like at Arena Wave 120. Which apparently is a load screen to the Woodland area. Whoops. Okay, here we go. So it's going to immediately start shocking and stunning anything that gets in its way. And they're not going to be able to move even at this relatively high arena wave. It's not going to be that high, but relatively high arena wave. And uh, you don't really get hit much because of that. And it does a lot of AoE damage, like a, a shit ton. As you can see, your frames don't really handle it too well, but who cares because everything's dead anyway and it can't move anyway, so it's not going to kill you. And so, yeah, it's kind of strong. And it's great in the monolith. I'm not probably going to show... Maybe I'll show some mono footage when I do the rotation later. Uh, it moves really quickly because we've got shield rush on our bar. So we get around really quickly. And the great thing is, one, even though I've got my hammers out like this and a shield rush, uh, it still hits things as it goes through. So you can really clear things out really quickly. Um, even if you're running through a monolith, you can get a lot of kills, a lot of XP. It's been way more fun than I expected. And it's really strong. If you like that playstyle in D2, I really think you're gonna enjoy this a whole lot. So in fact, while we're doing this, we can start with the pros and cons um, because there's really not a whole lot I have to think about while I'm doing this because everything's not moving. Okay, there we go. Uh, so the, the pros, the clear, obviously AOE, really good. Like no doubt about it. Uh, it just shreds enemies. I'm gonna keep going. I don't think I'll die, so. Uh, so yeah, clear is really, really good. Uh, you can get to like almost the entire screen clear if you're holding the button down and uh, anything that walks into it is just gonna get wrecked uh the stun on it just makes it like super tanky in a weird way there's not a whole lot that doesn't get stunned like even these guys these gorns who have relatively high health can't move they're just stuck level uh, wave 128 they're, they're not gonna do anything it's, it's kind of a joke you also have the ring of shields which is um preventing some of those ranged attacks from hitting you so you have time to get to the enemies and actually stun them so that's a really nice extra that actually hurt quite a bit those guys are hitting poisons on me aren't they but not enough to kill me um it's also very tanky in general not just because the the stuns but also um it's got reasonably high health i want to get more health out of it but it's got really high regen we're, we're pulling 385 uh regen so 385 hp per second so really hard to kill it um it's got the high HP, it's got the regen, crit avoidance is capped on it, uh, reses are all capped. Actually, I think I'm slightly below now because I made a slight change, but eventually when I get Necrotic back to capped, which won't be that hard. My fizz is actually 37%, um, which is from some changes I've made today, but you get those back up and capped, which is not hard because, as we'll talk about as well, my void is a mistake right now. Another change I made today, Orion's Eye being put on, makes that void irrelevant. So if I change some gear around, I can get those capped pretty easily. It's just, it's gonna, it's a very tanky build for how, for its clear speed. It's, really good in that stuff okay what about the cons though um as far as the dps on bosses it's not great 
it's just okay and if the bosses are fairly small like the shaman the fire shamans uh in one of the 90 timelines it's pretty bad because it can't hit them enough this is one of the few builds that can actually shotgun so all the hammers you put out will actually hit the enemy and if the the hitbox is pretty small on a high hp enemy they're not gonna get hit by as many and so the damage goes quite a bit lower but on some really big enemies like the undead dragon it actually has pretty decent dps so it's not like a big drawback but it is a drawback uh, it's also very mana intensive the way I built it. If you don't have Orion's Eye, you will go Oom um quite a bit. So Orion's Eye is not a necessity, but for the quality of life purposes, it really is pretty pretty necessary if you make it the same way I do. Uh, the other con is it has high investment. This uh, this costs quite a bit to make. There are quite a few um, actual items you need to get the kind of performance i'm getting out of this and some of them you can't even make the build without it we'll talk about that more in the gearing but one example is uh, mana on smite is an affix that's on this if you don't have it you have pretty much no mana regen you'll go um, almost instantly never return so you'll have to get quite a bit of things gearing wise to get, get this to work but once you do well you see the results now, how about skill level? What's the skill level of a player that wants to play this build? Can you play it like right out of the box? The answer is no, unfortunately, you cannot. It's more of an advanced build because of the high investment. And also, there's Sigils of Hope management in it, which isn't that big of a deal, but it's going to be pretty annoying, and it can take some work to get it to where it runs kind of smoothly. Um, for those reasons, I think it is a bit more advanced. I would not recommend trying this as your first build. Um, it's not going to perform anything like this until you start to pick up some of the items you actually need. Okay. How about patch considerations in the future? So there's really one thing I think you need to worry about, which is that mana on smite. Currently, if you are in the passive tree and you pick up, which, where's the node? This node right here. Uh, if you directly use smite, you can get 10 mana. We are circumventing that whole system because instead of that, we are casting smite through our throwing attacks, through our idols, and then using eight mana gain on smite use and this is not a direct use for whatever reason this is as long as smite gets used by something it counts that could be an oversight it might be a bug i'm not sure but if it is then it will eventually get fixed and that will pretty much destroy the build completely we will have no way of gaining our mana back so that is something to worry about. I don't see that being a problem for a while, though. Like, I don't think this is even on the devs' radar as an issue. But I think it will become one if they don't fix it or alter it in some way. So just bear that in mind. Okay. With that being said, let me just make sure Chad doesn't have anything important to say. No, we're good. Okay. Um, let's get into the specs, skills and specs and all that, sh all that stuff. All the fun stuff. Okay. Uh, hammer throw. This is what it looks like. We have a 22, so that means we have a uh, tier 5 on our relic. You can run this with uh, without it. You can run uh, 20. You can take like one out of here, one out of here, one out of here, one out of here, something like that. It'll work just fine. It'll be a, a little bit weaker, but it'll probably not even be very noticeable. Okay, so what have we done to make it work the way it does? We First, we've come up here. We've taken winged hammers, steadfast path, iron spiral, and hammer vortex, which gives you the spiral effect. So the hammers you know, spin around you. And then we've taken two of two in catapult to get the extra projectiles. This does increase the cost, but that's okay. It's worth it. We've taken five of five in Zealot's Conviction to get a 65% chance to deal double damage. We have taken one in Rapid Throw to get a three-pointer in Weighted Hammers, which gives us 45% more damage. As usual, as always, more damage multipliers are excellent. You definitely want as many as you can get. From there, we've taken two in Force of Impact, which increases our uh, stun chance and another more multiplier. And then five of five in Overwhelm for 150% more hit damage versus stun and 150% stun duration, which is just super tasty. It's why the enemies pretty much get stun locked. If they get stunned, they are stunned just about forever. Um, they have almost no hope of ever leaving that stun until they are dead. And it's exactly what we want to happen. Next thing that's super important is Smite. This is not on the bar because it doesn't need to be because it's going to be procced from our throwing attacks, which are our hammer throws. And the primary things is doing, there's two things. Uh, these nodes don't matter. This node does. 50% attack speed, which does apply to throwing attacks. So when, she, when you use it, you get four, four seconds of 50% attack speed. It's basically always up, except for like if you have an enemy in four seconds, you're just like throwing a hammer out. Once as soon as you hit something, you're pretty much got it up. And then over here, we don't care about this too much. is nice, but we don't care about it because they're stunned anyway. 
or take an order of Lagan to change it to lightning damage and ignite to shock. We're uh, increasing the number of targets it hits to a total of what? Uh, one, two, three, I think five total. And then 100% shock chance and 100% shock effectiveness. Now you might be like, well, why are you shocking? If it, it, lightning damage, right? It, it's better for lightning damage if you shock because you get increased lightning damage. And that's true. And we don't care about that part, though. We care about the fact that it actually decreases their stun avoidance. If you go look under shock over here, you can see that they uh, they have, uh, where is it? 5% uh, increased chance to be stunned by 10%. Wait, not 5%. Wait, resist by the error. Increased chance to be stunned by 10% for 4 seconds. That is a stacking debuff they have. So between our increased stun chance and their increased chance to be stunned, that's why everything gets stunned and pretty much stays that way. Okay, next on the list is Holy Aura. Holy Aura's got a bunch of different buffs for us. Uh, shelter of the from the Storm, 25% Ellie and Poison Resist. It's also got its own 30% Ellie in there, so that's 55% uh, of our Ellie Resist covered from one skill, which is ridiculous. Poison Resist is a nice little chair in the top. Uh, we've got Call to Arms for 20% Fizz damage. We are Fizz primarily. We have 48% uh, attack damage. Throwing attack damage, excuse me, and throwing attack stun chance. There's that stun again. We have 16% throwing attack speed and chance to get haste on hit. Um, that's awesome. And then another attack speed of 16%. And we took a little bit of health regen for good measure. And then we have ring of shields, which is really good now because these nodes used to be bugged, but now they're not, and that's amazing. We have uh, the two here for banding, which is really just to get down to enduring defense. This duration allows us to maintain 100% uptime on ring of shields and auto cast it without having to worry about it. We got two more shields. We've got uh, 15 heal per shield, which is a pretty decent amount, something like almost 100. Just a little extra region on top. And then Phalanx is 50% armor on heal. We're healing every time. We're well, not every time. We're healing like, I think, once every two or three seconds, and this stays on for four seconds, so it's 100% uptime for 50% armor buff. And then block effectiveness, same thing, 50% armor uh, uh, block effectiveness buff that's up 100% of the time. Uh, on top of that, Ring of Shields just prevents a lot of damage from ranged attacks, which is would otherwise be the weakness of the build because you got to get to the enemies to stun them. But since we can get there and let Ring of Shields take some of the damage for us, it really helps a lot. Last thing is Sigils of Hope. This is one of the most annoying skills in the game, but on this particular build, it's not too bad because we can take Last Wish and we kill things pretty quickly, and so it actually takes care of a lot of the stacks for us. We want to have four Sigils of Hope up at all time this will generally keep us pretty close to that and then we just press the button every once in a while and we're good we've also taken four empowering sigils to get there which is a damage uh buff so that's nice we've taken these which are really just to get to ex exigency which is, makes an instant cast which definitely smooths it out when you do have to use it and then the meat and potatoes of it comes up here uh, higher duration. We've got another maximum sigil. We've got double health regen. This starts off with 25% per sigil. And now we have 50% per sigil, and we've got four sigils. So do the math 200% health regen. It's why we get to like 380 health regen on the build. And we've also got three block chance and 45 block effectiveness per active sigil. Again, four. So another 12% block chance, uh, which is up pretty much 100% of the time. That are That's the skills and specs. Let's move into the passives. Okay. Sentinel base class we've taken. Fearless for the vitality and health regen. We've taken Juggernaut for that fire and void resist. I might actually pop out of this at some point. We'll see if I need the fire resist. The void resist is no longer useful. The strength is good though. This is a good note to take, but once you have Orion's Eye, the void resist is pretty much useless. So this could be a place to move things, but it's not really a big deal either way. If I stay here, it's not gonna hurt the build at all. Uh, protector for 120% block effectiveness and the block chance from the first point of that node. Five of five and armor clad for armor and decreased damage taken from nearby enemies. And then we've got at the very top, Blade Master, which gives us increased attack speed for wearing a sword or an axe. And we are wearing an axe. We're actually wearing uh, the Raider Axe, which is what I suggest because it's got base crit strike chance, which is not based on melee. So that's a really good node because it increases your crit strike chance base. From there, we will go to Forge Guard, where we have one of eight in Weapons Master, which really just opens us up to take Peltast, increased throwing attack damage, and increased throwing attack stun chance shows up again. We have uh, five of ten in Guardian for the health and increased stun chance again. We do have four of five in Steel Ages as well for block effectiveness and that additional block chance. 
And then 8 of 8 in Siege Captain for block fitness with a shield and physical throwing attack damage with a shield plus 16. There's the very unusual base attack damage in Passage Tree. They do show up from time to time. When you do see them, they're pretty good to take. Um, some classes have a lot more than others, but Sentinel is one that doesn't have very many. Okay, from there, we'll finish up in Paladin, where we'll take 1 of 5 in Honor, which is to get that block chance mostly. Then we're going to take 7 of 8 in Defiance for our Ellie resistant, Resistance. That will cap us alone. If you are capped, like really heavily capped, you can actually take out of this if you want to and put it elsewhere, potentially in Honor. Uh, 8 of 8 in Conviction. That, uh, that uh, Fizz Pen is our primary desire here, but the Fizz Damage is nice too. Then we've got 2 of 10 in Flash of Brilliance, the Health and Blind Chance. Seven and seven, seven of seven in holy symbol, mostly for the necronic and the health. The healing effect is, is nice for the shields, but it's really just a like a bonus. Uh, we've got one of ten in staunch defender, which is really just to get to shield wall, which is another five percent block chance and health gain on block. We can't dodge, we don't care, we're not dodging, we have no dodge points whatsoever in, invested, so that's fine. We have seven of eight in faith. Armor for the increased armor and crit strike avoidance. My suggestion is to get this to where you are crit avoidance capped and then don't worry about it from there on. And then take all of these. I haven't finished this up, but I will be taking 10 of 10 in Holy Precision. That uh, crit strike is awesome on this. This is the best crit strike uh, chance node in the, in the entire game as far as I'm concerned. From there, what I will probably do is I will probably go and take maybe this um i also like this for the move speed although the lack of the fire damage is not good in this build so i'm probably going to go like reverence of duality or uh, prayer ages for the health and gb and that should pretty much cap me i think i'm at like 89 or 90 right now um 88 so yeah that'll be pretty much be all i can invest in uh, once you get to the point that i'm at though this builds a, a monster so it's not a big deal where you go with it from there on that's all just like kind of like icing on the cake that is the passive tree let's get into the gearing there are definitely some things to talk about the gearing is more challenging uh, than some builds it feels like lately i've just been doing these more advanced builds i need to get some more basic stuff out there but that that's just the way it went and this stuff's got high gear okay the first thing we'll talk about smite on throwing attack chance to cast smite on throwing attack get four of these if you can it runs with two it just is a lot smoother with four because you'll have it proc more often, which means you'll get more mana, plus you'll shock more often. So I've got a 9, an 8, an 8, and a 6. I've got block effectiveness on three of those, that's good. And then the shred armor on hit with throwing tags is good too. If I could, I would probably take like another shred armor on here, I just don't have one. But uh, these are all really good idols, so I'm pretty happy with them. The next thing we need to talk about is mana on smite. This is that one I was talking about earlier, where it's a, it's a prefix. That gives you a set amount of mana. I don't think this is tier 5. It is tier 5, yeah. So I've got 8 here. You can actually, I believe you can put this one on your body armor too. I'm not 100% on that. But uh, putting it on your uh, helmet is plenty. Having 8 mana, I top off really quickly. So no issues there. Definitely make, you have to have that though. Like if you don't have mana on smite, you're just going to oom all the time. So this is a must-have affix on the bill. Next up, we got Orion's Eye. This is not a must-have, but it's a highly recommended because of that mana it has. Just like smooths out the build significantly. Everything else is a big benefit. Less damage over time taken. Uh, converting over Void to Fire means you don't need to build Fire Resistance anymore, and you'll take less Fire and Void because of it. And the in, uh, duration of stun, stun Immunity is always great because Stun this game is terrible. So any chance you can get to be stunned less often is good. Uh, Raider Axe, we talked about this a little bit before. Make sure this is the uh, base you have because of that base crit chance and because it's an act, you, Axe, you get the attack speed bonus. From there, I've taken Crit Strike Chance, Crit Strike Multiplier, Stun Chance, and Chance to Chill, and that's what I would recommend. Uh, throwing Attack on Rings, don't forget these. So the, the, man, the mana cost is great on these, also the base. Definitely make sure you have Tier 5s you can. I think these are both Tier 5s. Tier 5, Tier 5, yep. And let's see, shield. Shield block chance, throwing attack damage, reduced damage taken on block are all good. Health is good. Um, I thought there was one other secondary effect besides health. But either way, health is really good. So you can throw a resistance in there, that's really good. Whatever you need to fill that, that second spot. Reduced damage taken on block and block chance are the two biggest things that you want to make sure that you get, though. Uh, let's see, shield covered, and all right, let's cover the primary defenses you need and offenses you need. Offense should be pretty simple. Physical damage, throwing attack damage, crit chance, crit multi. All those are scalers with um, with this build. Defenses, you always want your resistances capped if you can. That's 
always going to be a primary. Crit avoidance is big. You can get crit avoidance off of the base here. You can get crit avoidance off of the undead dragon. Um, between those two, you can also get crit avoidance on the helmet. I didn't get lucky and get a, a good helmet with a good exalted. This was this was just a very lucky drop for me. Uh, but if you can also get like if you get the crit avoidance here and here. You can literally use one suffix or the dragon to crit cap. Instead, I have taken one here. I've taken crit avoidance here, and then I've gotten the dragon. And that crit capped me. I think I'm like right above 100, 102. Yep, 102. So try to get there. Uh, then from there on out, you're just looking for health and health regen. So uh, health regen per second is amazing because you're going to have a lot of health regen multiplier, uh, increase health regens. Um, so health regen per second there. This one's actually exalted health regen per second. That's awesome. If you get that kind of stuff, great. Increased health regen like this one's great. Increased health's great. Base health's great. That's all the stuff you're looking for. Pretty easy to build out for, really. Just health, health regen after you've got your resistances and your crit avoidance taken care of. Uh, that covers all of the... I think it covers all the, all the gearing. Yeah, we're pretty good to go there. All right, last thing. Uh, let's talk the rotation. In fact, let's go out of here. I'll talk how I'm doing the rotation. We'll do it in a... Um, a controlled monolith setting so that I can show you how to run it in a monolith of fate. It's not much different as you can probably imagine, um, but we can do it in a way we're actually running through a hey, golden key sweet. We are, we're actually running through the, um, the mapping instead of just seeing one spot land to come to us, which is really nice in the arena, but it's not how it's going to work for the majority of your gameplay, unless you're an arena pusher, by the way, this can push arenas. It, it's definitely can push arenas. I would build it probably a little bit differently. Um, I would definitely be pushing health as a more primary stat than I currently am. Um, but it, it, it can do it even as it is. In fact, it was designed to do that. And I did like close to 200 a couple of times and had some unfortunate deaths. And I was doing that without sigils. With sigils, I definitely wouldn't have died from those. Um, so yeah, they can definitely do that. Okay, let's we'll just run a quick mono. So what we're going to do in the mono is I want to keep up my sigils of hope to four stacks. Uh, I don't want it to fall off. If I see it falling off, I just put it put it back. But uh, a lot of times it will just get refreshed from killing enemies, so you don't have to worry about it too much. I'm going to use Shield Rush to get through the mono. As I hit things, you can see my mana gets improved or gets increased. I'm consistently right-clicking because that's where my hammer throw is. You make sure I have a circle of hammers out as often as possible. If I go through a short area like that, I'm going to lose a lot of hammers, so I have to keep that in mind. Um, and I use Holy Aura whenever I get into like a big pack or um, I get towards the boss. Uh, and then, of course, just hit up where the boss is. Make sure your hammers are up. Make sure your sigils are up. Uh, shield Rush when you need to. If you need to, Shield Rush can just kill enemies too. So, because you're going to have your hammers up. It's a pretty simple rotation. The real, only thing to really think about is when you're going to use your Holy Aura and making sure you have four sigils up, which they don't fall off very often. So there's not too much to worry about. It's a pretty easy thing to play overall as long as you get the sigils down. Yeah, and it, as you can see, it pretty much annihilates most enemies. They're actually getting buffed there. All right, here's a Patriarch Matriarch combo. Let's see how that goes. Oh, I actually let my sigils fall off. That was not the best idea. Oh, taking some damage. This, this is one of us I was talking about though. The one issue it has is when you have a high health. This is a high health. Oh God, I'm actually almost dying there. This is a high health. Um, I are uh, low hitbox enemy, so it's taking me a while to kill it because I'm just not hitting it very often. And it's also buffing the Patriarch. As soon as it dies, the Patriarch should be pretty soon to go. Yeah, there we go. And there it goes. That was like worst case scenario is getting those two and trying to talk through it and not pay attention. Um, but I still got through it. This is a level 100, by the way. Um, so I'm doing uh, empowered monos with that. And still survived it even though I stood in... Avalanche, which I don't recommend. Don't do that. It's not a good idea, but I was talking distracted, so I did. Still lived. That's the rotation. Okay. Um, I hope you enjoy this build, especially if you're coming from D2. I think this is a great build for D2 lovers. Um, and something that I definitely have enjoyed a lot more than I expected I would. Uh, if you'd like to hang out with us as we make more of these builds, uh, feel free to join us on our, our, my Twitch. It's actually where I'm streaming it right now. And uh, would love to have you. Love to have you come chat, ask questions. I love to answer questions. Spend most of the time playing and then answering questions, just chatting with people. And we have a great time. Love to have you there. Uh, also, we have a Discord if you'd like to join the community there. Um, ask questions as well or just talk with us. Love to have you there too. All right. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoy the build. And I'll see you all again real soon.